show you. You know, humanity has always wondered about the big things like how large is the universe or what causes gravity. And also one of the big discussions points is that it, should it be coal or should it be gas? So in this case I think I found a very interesting product. This actually is a grill that combines um, both coal and grill in the same unit. So yeah, we'll see what we get. Oh, well, let's get the box open and see what we can see. Now, this is a very big box and uh, it's 46 kilograms. Actually, recommend if you have two people carrying it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't try this. So, instructions. And it's going to be quite a few steps, I think. <laughs> 30 steps. So, so what's, the, what's the first one? It's like with or without the gym. Okay, so that's the whole side. Take some of the parts and put them on the side. Use your axis. Okay, so that looks like. Yeah, so, okay, everything's in separate unmarked boxes. Get rid of the star from first.
angles and like Sneak peeked up the instructions. Well packed, as far as I can see. So this is the one with the with the burner on. Gas. I always wanted to grill with a side gas burner. One of the ones that I've owned for several years actually have this option. So, looks like that. Not exactly together.
That's a way to get you out with Foster. It does have some tools. That's nice. Okay, get here. I don't think these have been distributed, the parts, uh, where, like, which cover they belong to, or so maybe they just put them based on where, where they fit the best. So I'm not really going to care from what the time. What side they came from? Oh, this is a bit nasty there. It's not made it easy to separate the plastic. Yep, this is one of the, one of the whole pads. Yep. Lifting port. <laughs> So far, so good. No, haven't found any damaged parts yet.
Packing.
good corner um, protection. That was the bottom side, I think. Well, probably the gas. an hour video about it. Put people to sleep. Unboxing a grill. region has, I don't know what rule that came with, it's, it's a crossbow new we're not allowed to put the gas canister under the grill anymore. Not even if you have one of these with doors on it. It's everywhere nowadays that uh, you're not allowed to put the gas bottle directly under the door. spend some time um, getting rid of all the packing material and organizing the table so we can actually start putting it together. So, time to start putting it together. So, well, it's what I fix it is the, we take like, yeah, in this case, like two sections at a, at a time or whatever is suitable and then I just put the parts here and then put them together. And then um, if you want the part references, the, or the fastener references, then they're, they're coded um, with letters and then you can find it in the, in the package of fasteners so you know which, which components to do. Um, but anyway, our first task is to take the lids and then it's to put the handles on and the temperature gauges. And I think these are actually identical to the temperature gauges. Yeah, it seems to be for the same temperature range. So let's stop it here. And then I'm going to try and use the tools that were 
actually in the packaging, even if that <laughs> not a very nice screwdriver to use. I, I have some other tools also reserved. Does that feel good using using out of the box tools then? There is one thing that when you have black fasteners against black, um, otherwise black surfaces, then it's actually sometimes hard to see how things where the fasteners are. the same with the other side. So that's the handles on and the temperature indicators. So then we need to put the hinges on the um, cover side. So that's we need these and then force bolts and then No, right. As far as I can see, there's no right left model. It's just uh, they're all the same. that lost. Take a new one. Probably the starter thread that's messed up. But I do have thread dies so I can actually So I'll go get my thread dies and try and clear that one. Bit about the branding. I mean, this is 
generically branded, so I did buy it from a company called Rusta, but it's, um, they probably provide the same drill or the same structure under many different other brands. Anyway, so I'm just going to tighten those down and put the um, hinges on the other side also. So, that's the hinges on. As usual in the summer, people cutting grass, trimming stuff, airplanes flying. <laughs> So, next is to put the chimney on, like that, Let's see if we, can. we can actually fix this. I think that's the wrong size. <laughs> there isn't anything. Oh, wait, it's over here. Sorry. It's actually connected to the larger one. I mean, this does not going to be under that much mechanical stress. It doesn't need to be super tight. Okay, so this is the front panel, and then we need to um, put this bracket on. Ah, that. And then with these two screws. together and they will be combined with this with this one and the orientation should be correct with those screws.
Just leave it a bit loose for now. the right way around. <laughs> I'm gonna try to double check so we'll see. So that's done. So next step um, handle assembly and gas valves. So this is gonna go on inserted through from the other side and the screwed on. here goes to the extra burner on the side. Probably can't see it on the camera, but this is the sheet on sheet metal. It's very thick. To get those cross thread. Oh, no, I think we can tighten it down. Reasonable strength because this is aluminium on the backs. End up stripping the threads or something. Stood it to go through there and then like that and then the washer and then the nut to get a spanner. Let's 
see what size fit. No? What? <laughs> it's not that one really. It's not. Oh, so they haven't included a tool for that. Well, I have tools. Sun is shining again, it's getting getting a bit hot in here. So, that's the way it's supposed to go together, theoretically speaking. Now the next step is a bit complicated. I don't really understand the picture, so what I'll do is I will um, figure it out and just show where this is supposed to go. So, so it's supposed to slot in. But I'm not, I'm not really, it's not really clear to me what that, how they're trying to explain the four millimeter distance. I think it's because that you can adjust it, so let's see, maybe I'll understand better when, when it's actually together. So I think this, we can only drop it, put it in there like that, and then it has two of these screws. Adjustment. 
So we'll have to just take it as it comes. Four millimeters is going to be critical. Cool. gonna have to look at my filming monitor see if I can actually see it. See there's a hole there, so you need to bring this ignition wire through there. Let's see that it's not jammed on anything. And the same with the next one. It's not that clear as to how many. There should be ten. It says ten screws. Like this. Oh, well, I think I'll just have to stop screwing on to actually see where. Assuming it's those small holes that they want. Let's give it an initial try.
and just sort of tighten this and come back and see how it needs to be straightened up. But uh, these, so you put the uh, these screws into the holes that are for this size of screws. So the other holes that exist are for bigger bolts. So that's at least a good hint. It's the picture, I don't think, is that? Getting a bit big to build. Easier to
show. Oh. Now this is bent out in a very weird way here. But it's gonna be something else bolting onto it, so I don't know if that's critical. And then this is still a bit floppy. So, so anyway, one there, one there, one there. One there, one there. That's I think the way they wanted it. Could be wrong, I was thinking maybe it should be in here. It wasn't easy to see from the picture. So and that holds that plate. Okay, so far. <laughs> we'll see if we have to, but I think they're going in the right places. Eh? Let's take hopes. Worst case, we have to move them. have a hole otherwise they're the two these two are identical but then as I understand it there's going to be this bracket here is go, only going to go in one of them so I don't know why they maybe there's something else that screws on there 
What would be opening down? Double check. Yeah. And the, in the picture, the that that part doesn't look exactly the same. I think they tried to make it faster to make. So in the, in the picture, it has a little bit more complex geometry. And then when they got to manufacturing, they said, "Oh, well, well, why do we have to do so many actions? Let's just make it make it a simpler design." Step one for the leg assembly. So uh, now we're going to put all the four legs on. So these two on this side, and it's got eight volts, and then there are related washers. drawings uh, a little bit ah if one just casually looks at it it's a little bit misleading it would it would go like that but if one looks at it in more detail it's actually there very like wobbly when it comes to the location so I'm just gonna try yeah, approximately straight into that edge <coughs> but I think the one shouldn't tighten down too much right now because it's gonna when we continue with the next phase though might need to be slightly adjusted. Um, 
Yeah. The other two legs on. I mean, they're identical except for the fact that they have. Um, well, actually, they're not. No, not identical. But anyway, they are the same as um, the two legs that go on the other side are identical between themselves, and plus they have the hole for the wheels. So, so I'm just going to screw this in. So that's all four legs on a bit hard film because it's on such a wide angle. But anyway, uh, when you put the legs on, you just have to notice that on this side they have this brass insert, so it needs to be on the inside. So that's uh, yeah, so you actually don't screw them on the wrong way around, which I actually <coughs> did with one of them until I noticed it up actually the wrong way around. So, next phase, feet. And they go on the side that hasn't got the wheels, of course. They were going there and there. And it looks like they're quite a tight fit, so. So, I'll just get that job done. Oh, they were quite a tight fit. Um, forget I'm about to... Uh, yeah, now they're in. So, next thing is to put the shelf on. I'll have to go... Like this with the warning sticker. The correct orientation. It's just black on black again. And then it's these, these screws. So difficult to see. So, you know, I'll just get the four screws in. So, that's the bottom plate on. Yeah, four screws. A little bit of fiddling to get them into place. Oh, so, next phase is put the um, wheels on. And then you need these parts, two nuts, two spacers, and, and the axle, which is this one. Threads aren't very good. Damage threads were not very good. No, the nuts fine. So that's the <laughs> another damaged thread. Great. Okay, so. Uh, so what I'm going to do is tighten this up.
So we just tighten it on so, so that it gets onto that locking area. And we put that in there. fix this thread. So anyway, fix the thread. A little bit damaged when I had it in the vise. It might have the functional. So this is a thread die, so you can actually run the thread through. Now it was very twisted, so it was you know, actually a bit of a struggle to get fixed. I think it'll be okay. flop around and then it'll be done. So anyway done. <laughs> Put the spacer on the wrong place. Now it's fixed. Yeah. Oh, it's getting hotter again now. It, we had a thunderstorm, I had to stop doing this the noise around here and then um, the sun came back with a vengeance. Oh, it's really hot. But anyway, the wheels are on. So now we have to put the hinges on the back. And these are these, and there's going to be four of them. Sitting on there like that. And then need to be like this collection of fittings. fix the, the bolt that was broken so I had to run it through, through the um, die and clear it out. It seems like they're somehow totally mismanufactured because it was actually again quite hard to make this thread which wouldn't be the case if one thought it was in good shape so it might have, there is a possibility it might be a bit bent or something but it'll do it for the grill. And there was blood. So Get, um, get these installed. Okay, it's not going to be super easy to punch. So, so do the round washer first, big one. And now it'll be the spring washer. And then it'll be the nut.
So, that way and then this hammer. So I will um, get all these bolted on. Whew. So, anyway, coming on. After that one I decided I really needed a gloves up for getting really hot in here. Putting on the top bolt first is easy. Another bolt that's not not okay. Yeah, looks like we got yeah, one more bolt that's not in good shape. Yeah, have to fix that. So anyway, it turned out to be the nut was the problem in this case. Boring dealing with fastness if they're not in good shape. It eats up a lot of time. So that's like one bolt, one nut, and then one thread. It wasn't in good shape. It's the thing is they use dies that aren't, in the, aren't in, maybe not in the best shape, and then they, they um, anodize the stuff. So. One of those processes can cause problems. Oh, let's hope the final one goes on okay.
for me. But that mud is also a little rough. damage is a little little damage here. Slightly skeptical about this corner here, I don't think that's supposed to it's like something's hit it. So, yeah, I think that's been I think that's been damaged. But it probably won't affect the usage. Since it's spring wash or locked on thin materials, I'm not tightening a lot. But this, this here is a straight edge, it's supposed to go all the way straight now. It seems like something's heavy, it's like hit that and cut right through it, so it's bent down. So now we'll go get a pair of pliers and um, fix that up. So let's see if we can straighten this up. As I said, even I don't think it's going to work. It's going to affect. In any way, more of the aesthetics. But anyway, done. So now I need to put the um, cold base in. And the first action is to hook this one here in there, and then this here can go in there, and then there'll be two pin locks, or these two locks, and then one pin, and the pin goes over there. And due to the tight space, I'll have to just do it, and then I'll um, show what it looks like. So, so this, this bar lifted up here, pin in place, and this, this floppy thing, pin in, and then secured. So, now we need to secure it in place. And that's four screws, two will go in there and then two will be in the inside. And that will fasten the side of the of this coal holder. So I'll get it <laughs> get it filled it fiddled in the plug. So now this is in place. What I screwed on was this side support here and that side support there and then you screw it in from the other side. Here or from the outside and here on the inside. And four screws. Here's the opening. So I'm going to put the vent cap on. And it's this one. As I understand it, it should be like that. 
and then you have screw and nut. That's to get air for the coal. So, next thing. The front. And that just goes through and then it's on. You have a special nut, the only one that exists. And if you lose it, you can't build the whole world. Build it a bigger if you lose it. There's only one. Special one. through here and then you have the screw on there and then when you screw it in it lifts the table and you screw it down out and it lowers the table so then you can adjust the heat uh, from the coals. So now we move to the gas side and these are these gas distributors burners with the starting voltage comes in there, creates a spark, goes around, lights up. And now we need to remember to try and connect the energy for the lighter. And it should be down. And then that was the. Uh, I'm going to double check how it's the right way around. Yep, according to the picture, it should go. The edge should be up. Stop. And then let's just insert a pin. In there. I'll just double check if it's the right. Yep, that's the way you're supposed to put it in. <laughs> the pitch looks very complicated, but it's actually not more than that. So I'll put the other two in. So that's that installed. So anyway, now it's gonna put the fire guards in. There are these things. They should be opening towards the front and going across. Opening towards the front and going across. And it has these little screws.
Oh, next job is to put the first side table on. And then we have these kind of hang on connections. So, what one should do is take the bolts and then not screw them in completely. Leave like five millimeters out. So I had to bring out my own tools. Never a little bit more usable. So this one. So let's move on to the next one. So there should be H something up there. I think these are just for hanging things on, so they go in here. tools which is quite nice. So who will be the other side? With the same, similar, exactly the same installation instruction as for this one, so, so I'll just get that done. So that's the side burner, at least the table in place. Now I had to use one of these flexible things to get it to get in there to tighten. So that's done. And then I think there was one more detail. See if I can get it screwed in. So I have to try and fiddle it in. So anyway, well that's not that much fun. This side inside there it has no thread. It hasn't been machined. So it's just a clean hole. It might be that it, the, I didn't actually check this, so maybe there's a like a thread insert or something, but this this hole is empty, so can't screw in a screw, but 
seems in a hole with the thread, but I hope it'll be good enough for one. Well, that's a bit disappointing. So, next up, we need to adjust this because it actually doesn't have the actual burner unit. And this you fasten with two screws from underneath through those two holes there, and then this end needs to be on the nozzle, the gas nozzle that's underneath. get that position. So we're back when it's installed. Oh, this is what I meant when it's when it rains. It gets a bit noisy in here. So. Oh, it's raining again. Anyway, um, as you see now, this is connected, and the pipe ends up on the on the gas nozzle underneath. And then shouldn't forget to connect in the um, starter, and that goes at the end, the other end of this one here. Connected. Now we have a starter for that. Can put back. No, we can close it. So, that's done. Okay. Now, doesn't look like it's going to give up anytime soon. But anyway, I put the the covers in place and um, the most important thing is to remember to put the the cover for the coal on the right on the right part because um, you know the one with the uh, chimney is the one for the coal and then the gas hasn't got any exhaust and then you use these combination just to yeah put the pins through and then lock it so I'm just going to get that done. And of course it's raining because you know the grill is nearly done. So I would like to actually take this out and use it. <laughs> oh, well, rain is temporarily calming now. Might start cascading. But anyway, now it's um, pins and locked. Let's see, um, let's see if this will work. However, actually the lids are very light, that's fine. When they're actually full. Not bad. So, next step is to put the handles on the drop pans. These screws and wash. Four of them. And then, the interesting thing is that this is now empty. Everything should be installed, and the only leftover screw is this one that I couldn't actually screw in because there was no thread to screw it in. So anyway, I'll get those in place. So, handles are on. And um, it's important that when we put, the, put these in place that we put them in the right order. So this one is for the gas side and this is for the coal side. So I'm just going to go slide them in. <laughs> and, you know, as soon as I press the record button then the Rain starts getting hard. <laughs> and anyway, here's so we have the drop pan in place. And on the gas side, we need to remember to put the drip pan.
are these. So black on black, not easy to see. But anyway, there it goes in. Oh, it doesn't. It goes in like. Transport, they got a bit twisted though. So, anyway, there's there's a hole in there and a hole in there, and then it continues through out through the cover. the exit hole through the casing so you, you, you put it in so that this end goes in first and it'll be the opposite on the other side. So now they're in place. Close that. Open that. Close that. And open that. So that should be alright. So we have these final parts. And there's three of them and they go on the gas side. And let's see which way around they go. And they just sit there. There's no screws or anything for these. these knobs so make sure we put them the right way around. One. There's a little observation I did that but each side comes with the same steel grills and in lots of the advertising material including the as assembled picture and the one that they had on display it actually had a, a special grid with a hole in it so that you can have a special lock that you can insert um, I think it was for the grill side for the coal side I can't remember which but anyway so that's a bit of a like if you if, if you buy this and you you saw that picture with the walk function in it then make sure that you actually get the um, if they have different models uh, that you can pick up to make sure you pick up the one that actually has the, has the uh, walk opening in it because this don't this one does not it's not a big deal for me because I'm not predominantly interested in that function so Okay, I did miss a point. I was thinking of there's no buttons <laughs> or no, no knobs. Uh, yeah, and it was actually uh, somehow my brain skipped over the step 
26 supposed to put them put the knobs. But, ah, nothing. Uh, there's no screws or anything, so I'll just get them. And then you have to remember this one. It'll also the extra one here. So I'll get that fixed. Oh, that's the knobs um, put in place. So, last remaining task is to connect the regulator and pipe for gas. And uh, seems to be a little bit different regulation depending on if you're in Germany or God, of course, depending on what area in the world, then it might vary. I mean, we it's a Scandinavian solution, so we we just put in a pipe, and that's the end that we have on this unit. Uh, but um, in for our region, they had a had a yeah a side box full of the correct regulator setup. So so you know that this is going to do the correct pressure drop from the gas canister. And it has the pipe and then fittings. So, so I, I actually picked one of those up just. To, I have a regulator with pipes on or on it already, but then um, just to be sure that. Um, it probably is the same pressure reduction, but just in case it isn't, then I thought I'd invest in the one that's the same brand as the, as the grill. So anyway, I'll just get this prepared. Then I have this gauge here, yellow meaning the gas is getting low. And sometimes this hose is very difficult to get off. Okay, it'll take a while to fix that. It's actually a rather tough pipe. So, I got, <laughs> got it on. Um, I mean, one could, uh, if it feels like it's just nearly impossible to get on, could use a little bit of soap water. Don't think it will damage the functionality with the volume of gas being pushed through. So, so clip. And the important is to get the pipe over all the notches that are on, on this end to make sure it's it's gonna be tight. too tight, not too loose either, and in the middle of the area where it's it's um, coming in. <laughs> I need to get this onto the grip. It might have been easier to put the hose on while it wasn't installed in the location it is. Let's see how it goes. Anyway, one hint I can give, make sure you put this one on first, like that. So when you're struggling with that to get it on, then you find out you haven't put the clip on. I mean, you can, some of these clips you can actually disassemble, the, but uh, in some cases they get broken if you do that. First, put it on the pipe. So, got the gas hose connected to the grill. That's done. So, now, officially speaking, the whole 
we'll should be together. No more fasteners, more instruction steps to follow. So anyway, if you found this interesting, um, consider um, hitting the like button. If you'd like to see this type of content and other activities, then hit the subscribe. And um, merch is available. If you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee, that would be appreciated. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, did also buy a few accessories. So here's this kind of a big flat pan since I don't have the, the grilling, um, grid grilling. So you can use this for more like flat, flat grill. Flying things on the grill. stuff and so the stuff you don't want to, to fall down in the cracks then you can use that. Since it's a little bit rough and stuff then you can stay out of the bowl. So I also bought a cover because in, in our region you can't really just leave the equipment out of it. We have ah, quite a bit of ugly weather also even, even during the summer so we need to have something to cover it up. Plus we get a lot of pollen generation. So if you don't want to get horribly dusted, then it's good, it's good to have a cover. And this is uh, the large size, so I hope it's actually going to be big enough. So I'll just put it on, see if it fits. Yep, no, it's just the first fit, so I think I can get it nicely on. And then, ah, hint, I actually think, I think I had it back to front because the logo is on the other side. But uh, yeah, I think that'll do for that good protection. I think I'll probably have to put some extra protection on the chimney for the coal because this here, uh, it's not sharp, but it's not. There's some kind of a plastic insert to put on top of that so it won't push through. But otherwise, I think it'll be okay. <laughs>